at this point in our life, in, in, our, in this community, we can tilt the ballot. The number is getting bigger. You know that, right? So, so what is happening here is that as we get bigger, issues also get bigger. So we really do need your help and help in this community. And I'm saying that because African community, the, when we got in this country, what we do is we go to work, we go to Western Union, we go to school, we go to Western Union. This is all we do. But it came to the point where we realized that we're here to stay. And we ask it to everyone to know that we're here to stay. We are the fabric of this community. We're going to be we're part of it. By doing so, we try now to come out and do anything a normal citizen could do. But the, the, the only thing we have, we, we, the only stumble we run into is that we still being marginalized. And now we're not going to let that one go. We're going to fight that one until, really, because we are here to stay. We, have, we are grandparents, we are parents, we are husbands, we all those things. So the only thing we're telling you here is that we are here. So let's work together. And whatever you can do to help our community is going to be a great job for all of us. Because really, a housing, uh, a social services, immigration issue, really, I can stress any, there's nothing that stress African than immigration issue. Because this is something that we think that if you could, if you can champion, can help us, as we probably noticed, we call your office a whole lot about that issue. Because we're talking about family. You can't be here, have your child in all part of the world, and be here, be contributing to the society, um, paying your taxes like anybody else, doing whatever it takes to happen. But we seem to be, what, for some reason, Africans are having problems with immigration. But we, look, we, know, we notice that in the Euro, Europeans, the immigration issue is not the same as ours. So something is there that has to be, has to be addressed. Is it because what's happening is that you cannot explain to us that we go to the immigration. Let's give you a list of five things to, to bring. You bring the five things, they come out with the sixth thing. And when, when unlike the other people are coming here, and they really don't have any issue. They, they've been getting a visa, coming here for visitation and go back. We are not getting that. We are not getting that. So really, something has to look into for, to help our community. And, and, and this is the only thing I can think of right now that we really need to help on, helping us making that happen. Because uh, Africans, we are struggling, we are doing everything we can to make this country a great country, but we are not seem, we don't seem to be getting the result from the politicians. So we expect you to do something. Okay? So, again, like I say again, um, really, the uh, uh, Cameroon, Senegal, you know, you know, I'm, I'm in both places, so I, I, got, I, got, I gotta make that. I can name names for those that are here. So thank you for coming, and I really don't let me say I know. Thank you, Dr. Nancy. Your comments don't fall on that fear. I hear you. We deal every day with the immigration issue in our office. I would say over 80 percent of the cases we handle have to do with immigration from all countries of the world that live, come to the Bronx. But we're living, when I say but, doesn't mean we give up. But we have to face reality, and that is, in my case, that for some reason, the issue that divides the country the most, besides this silliness we have about everybody having a gun, is the issue of immigration. The country has a very short memory. But there are still enough strong voices to change. And so the best that we can continue to do to win this battle, we continue to do exactly what you're doing. Feel free to express yourself. I don't consider what you just did a complaint. I consider it a reminder of what my work has to be a challenge of what my work has to be. I have to go deal with the Tea Party. I save you from that. That's why you sent me there. They don't believe any other person should come into the country. They believe everybody should stay out. And we deal with that on a daily basis. But you know something? 
Every day, the immigrant community in this country gets stronger. It faces challenges. It faces all the issues you discussed, and I am committed to working on them. But every day, it gets stronger. It grows. It grows in numbers. It grows in education achievement. It grows in other areas. And so be as strong as you are. Be the leader that you are. And if I don't listen, and I will listen, you know, I wear a shirt and a jacket and a tie. You can grab me in three different places and pull me over, and I'll do the right thing. In Spanish, we have a phrase that I was going to leave for the end, but I'll use it now. Dime con quién andas y te diré quién eres. Tell me who you walk with, and I will tell you who you are. We walk together, we are one people. I will continue to do that, and thank you so much. The next nominee, uh, honoree is a group, Above and Beyond Initiative Incorporated. Nobody here from Above and Beyond Initiative Incorporated? Marianne. <laughs> Marianne Mohammed, co-founder and other co-founders of present is my understanding. Initiatives is a, uh, the, this program is a Bronx-based nonprofit that focuses on better equipping young people, minority women, with professional skills to better themselves. Participants ages 14 to 17 are prepared for the real world through career, personal, and social development programs, as well as the leadership training programs. Using a holistic approach, ABI's aim is to help growing and often underserved populations. And so this work that you do with young people, in all honesty, you may not have gotten the most shouts, but you get a big shout from me. Because when you work with young people, you are really investing in the future of our community. And God knows that we have in our community more young people than we if you look at my congressional district, there are more people who live here who are under the voting age than people that are over the voting age. Because we have a young community from all over the world. So I want to uh, present you with this certificate of appreciation, recognition of the U.S. Congress. And uh, thank you. neighborhoods. We're all born and raised in the Bronx. We're from, Af you know, West African descent. And we didn't have um, opportunities to, you know, thrive. Now we're all college educated, working mid professionals. And it's because we really took advantage of services that were out there for us. So we just want to make sure that we provide that for young women. 
Um, we are being honored tonight for um, an initiative we did earlier this year called My Sister's Keeper, where we collected toiletries for women in the homeless, the, the homeless shelter system in the Bronx. We collected thousands of, yeah, we collected thousands of toiletries, and we actually had the event here in May. Um, it's going to be an initiative that we're um, we're going to expand and hopefully have every year, and you know we'll let everyone know what we're doing, and we're continuously doing work. We're developing programs for young women, career development, resume building, social etiquette uh, classes, and you know of course getting our young women civically um, engaged in their community. So again, thank you, Congressman, and thank you, everyone. All college educated. What does that mean? Of African descent means they could have said, not my problem. That was my parents' problem. My grandparents' problem. Not my problem. College educated could have mean I can go over there and make a lot of money. I don't have to be doing anything in the community. But they chose to take the roots of their culture and their ancestry and their college degree and use it to help people that have less. This is what our society should be about. I don't claim to be a preacher or a reverend, uh, an imam or anyone who knows how to explain the different books and the good books, but I do know one thing that somewhere at the end of our existence, those who could have done something else for themselves and choose to do for others are the ones who are going to have the keys to go somewhere very nice. And, and <laughs> so, how my job gets easier, you three make my job easier. All these folks make my job easier. And, and, I, and I thank you, I thank you. And you notice how this crowd turned around and went real crazy, right? So let's hear it for them again. I'm not a fast runner, I run very slow. But if you look at my politics and you look at my running, you see something similar. Slow, but I don't give up. I don't stop running. So I'm running and we're going through the cloisters. You know where the cloisters are? And there's a priest there, Catholic priest, my religion. And he's trying to be nice to people, but he doesn't realize what he's doing. I'm climbing a hill, and I feel like I'm dying, and he's going like this to everybody. <laughs> I feel like saying, Father, that's not what you're supposed to do when I'm climbing the hill. You're supposed to give me water, you know? <laughs> but not least is Mohammed Kaaba, neighborhood organizer. It doesn't say this in my notes, but I'll say it the way I feel it. Like so many people, Mohammed was born in the Ivory Coast and raised in New York. If you try to ask how many people who live in New York were born in New York, you may be shocked to find out how many people who live and love New York were not born in New York, born somewhere else. And so you are an example of a true New Yorker. Thank you. I'm a New Yorican. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in the Ivory Coast, raised in New York. He holds a BA in history with a minor in middle and high school education from CUNY, Herbert H. Lehman College. He previously worked at the African Communities Together organization to reach efforts to their community and to their constituents. He is currently working as community liaison you like my French? Community liaison at the Mayor's Office of Immigration Affairs. <laughs> Additionally, he serves as an executive board member of the Council of Young African Leaders, participated at the 2015 International Young Leaders Assembly at the United Nations that enabled him to collaborate with other like-minded individuals throughout the world to better, better, to build a better African community. The reason I'm stumbling over some of these words is that I'm too vain to tell you that I left my glasses at home. 
my reading glasses, they were there while I was watching the Rangers play the other baseball team, and I was having a heart attack. Thank you so much for the work you do. Thank you for the work you do for the city of New York. Thank you for being a true New Yorker, a true leader. Don't be so shy. I'm a congressman. I can say it. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Auntie Say. Oh, that's it. That's all I know. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias. Nada. Nada. Aniche. Aniche.